MV Augusta's F4. Now, it's a 2011 model, and in Australia, you could only get the F4. MV Augusta didn't build any F4R or F4RR models. Now, this particular bike here is $25,800 right away. So that means anywhere in Australia, doesn't matter where you live, that's what it's gonna cost you to ride out of your local MV Augusta dealer. Now, what's happened with MV, you would have all heard about the Harley Davidson debacle. It's now back in Italian ownership. So the company has decided that in 2012, it's going to ramp up manufacture. So it's going to build another F4R and an F4RR. Now the double R is the is the, the version most people have heard about. It's uh it's reputedly the most powerful sports bike, production sports bike in the world, even more powerful than the ZX10R Kawasaki and BMW's S1000 double R. But realistically, it's only splitting hairs. It hasn't got that much more horsepower, but it is a very powerful beast. This particular bike here has got 186 horsepower from its 1000cc inline four-cylinder engine. Now, with MV Gusta in Australia, there's a new sheriff in town. So, basically, you couldn't buy a brand new MV for the last 12 months or so, but now there's a new importer bringing the bikes in. And what they've done is slash prices. So that's why you can buy one of these for 25,800 right away, which is great. Now, we probably should take a little bit more of a closer look at this bike, about the technical side of it, before we take it on the road. Now, you know, with a good Italian bike, Marzocchi forks, you'd expect that 50 millimeters on the front, fully adjustable. Brembo brakes all around. Interestingly, a Saks rear shock, also fully adjustable. A little bit surprised that there's not a Marzocchi shock on the back, but that's life. Styling with any bike like this sort of high end of the market, styling is a big thing. In many ways, I think it looks just like a lot of other sports bikes, except for a couple of areas. The single-sided swing arm, which you'll find on Ducatis as well, I suppose, but also the four muffler out, out um, puts at the rear, which is really a trademark of MV Augusta's sports bikes. But realistically, I like, I like the bike. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, the colours, black, silver, those sorts of colours, very understated. And another surprise. But this particular bike is all about going fast on the road. If you want to ride this in traffic, you're kidding yourself, it's not going to be enjoyable. And if you don't like the riding position out in the open road, it's just going to become an expensive garage ornament. Now, as much as I've liked MV Gusters over the years, one thing that's always detracted from the riding experience, and that has been the fueling. On just about every MV I've ever ridden, the fueling has been fairly average. And I'm really looking forward to, see, to seeing if this is any better. So let's get it out on the road and let's just give her a flogger. I said earlier that I had reservations, you know, about how the fueling would be on this MV Augusta and uh, based on my experiences in the past, I can say straight away that it's 100% it's better. What I initially thought was a couple of uh, flat spots, you know, as you're coming out of corners, is actually the traction control working. It's got an eight level traction control, easy to adjust on the dash. And you can really feel it when, you, when you're cranked over a bit, as you're getting on the power, you can feel the traction control cutting in and as you become more upright, the, uh, the flat spot as such goes away and you get full power. The dash is comprehensive, it's easy to use, which is great, nice taco. And the riding position is really suited well for this type of road. You know, as I said earlier too, in the city and stuff, not much fun. On this sort of, in, in this environment, Hard to fault, it's really made to go quick, you know. The suspension is firm enough without being too hard. It's, it's pretty compliant and, and quite surprised. Now the brakes, the brakes are, are very good. They have a lot of initial bite, but not too much. Sometimes with top shelf brakes, 
you get too much initial bite and it's hard to retain that smooth riding style. I find these have just got enough initial bite to be, to be spot on and then if you need more power, great. Now, it's, as I said before, Brembo brakes, but it's combined with a Nissan Master Cylinder. And the rear brake even works. Now, I can't remember the last Italian sports bike I rode that the rear brake worked. They're normally there for, uh, you know, for an ornament, but this thing works. Sports bike, hard to fault, lots of horsepower, lots of torque. Through a lot of 35k corners, I could be in fourth gear and then it still pulled cleanly on the way out. That's, that really impressed me. Uh, the mirrors, yeah, like any sports bike, they're just bolted on there. All you can see is your, your elbows and, your, and the rest of your body. Look, I think MV Gus has done a great job on this one. It's not shy of horsepower, but I'm really looking forward to riding the RR that's got you know, a reputed 320 km hour top speed.